Good afternoon. It's a pleasure to be here again since I think it's 2013 and every time the audience is getting better and that is very, very promising. Now, basically, in the past I talked about the, the proposed ECI and rights of nature. This year I want to build on that because we're now, as Bronwyn and others have said, looking towards the details. On the one hand, we've got, we know the problems, we've got the generalities, and we also have a lot of activity on the ground facing individual problems. The problem is to make the link between the abstract ideas and the concrete reality. What I want to do here is to bring the linguists into this debate. I'm a lawyer, I'm a linguist, and I want to, prevent, to present a conceptual approach based on analysing the concept of rights of nature, making a legal linguistic analysis, looking at rights, looking at right, looking at of, looking at nature, and the concepts. Now, I must uh, say la. Merci. So, that is a brief summary here. So, we know the background. We have a lot of documents. We have, our, of course, the Paris Agreement. We've got the Harmony with Nature dialogue, which is developing well, which I think we have to build on. We have the Universal Declaration of Rights of Mother Earth, which is also we can build on. And we have this ECI draft EU directive, which I would recommend analyzing, because it is intended to be practical, solid, and realistic. So how do we implement rights of nature in legal text? This is one of the things we're discussing. We have to turn theory into everyday practice. We have to analyze concepts. We have to explore the permutations and options. And I think we can make analyses from a lang law and language combined viewpoint. And here, I would take the concept of rights of nature. So. Firstly, we have right, we have rights, we have three words, we have a linguistic term, we have a unit of meaning, we have a concept. We can make a, an analysis in linguistic terms of the significance of each word. What is right? What are rights? We can build in legal theory. We can identify the counterparts to rights. And here we think of duties, powers, liabilities, and we're into legal theory here. And we can replace these words with other words and explore relationships. And that is what it is all about. Secondly, we can take the word of. This is the little linking um, possession word, genitive case. So nature is a possessor, but what is the nature of that possession, ownership, or some other form? How do rights vest? What happens if we change a proposition for another one, by, with, to, from, above? We can play around with this. We can use grammar to explore relationships, and ultimately that is what grammar is about. It's about relationships. Now, this, I think, can help us to clarify our thinking, and we can make a matrix and a uh, table of relationships. Then we come to nature. What is nature? Well, we have the scientific analysis, the various phenomena, animal, mineral, vegetable, all of these things. But how do you make the connection? What are the rights which are vesting, which we want to vest in nature? And what aspects of nature? What are the rights of mosquitoes? What are the rights of elephants? What are the rights of a rock, a mountain? These are all questions which we have to, to, to find answers to. And we are working our way towards that. But my point is it giving us a complex picture on rights of nature, not a, a simple one. And if we're into lawmaking, we have to be honest about reality, and this is important, and we also need a theoretical framework to guide decision making, and this is what we're working on. And we're in general agreement here that our current frameworks need updating. We have to find a way of matching uh, our frameworks, our conceptual frameworks, our cultural ideas, our legal ideas, to match the reality which is now, which is imminent. So that means we're looking for new legal concepts, new principles, and new criteria. And here we come to the concept of rights of nature. And we can start by saying, do we need this concept? On this side, we think we do, but we also have to justify, we have to demonstrate this need, and we have to, to convince people who are, who are skeptical. Uh, and uh, my view is that we can take uh, each of these aspects and explore them uh, in, in terms of an analysis. So this means rethinking how we view the world, our place in it, and how we relate to nature. And the main point here is that it's implementing and it's progressing the expert summary in the Harmony with Nature virtual dialogue, which we hope will build on 
and which will also engage more and more with the practicalities, with the how do we do agriculture, how do we do industry, how do we do mining, all of the everyday practicalities. And that is, I see it, how we're, we're gradually working towards. So with that, I want to say thank you very much. Thank you.